this is an article from New York Times detailing uh, FDA Twig's account or detailing FA Quid regarding a lawsuit that she's filed against Shia LaBeouf concerning a abusive relationship that she was a part of. And again, it's pretty, it's a pretty tough read. Don't get me wrong. Um, again, I'm not really too familiar with FK Twigs' uh, music. I've watched a couple of Shia LaBeouf's movies. More importantly, uh, Honey Boy, which probably lends itself to explaining a little bit of some of his actions towards women going forward. Um, but again, I think there are some bigger questions to be um, asked about these kind of relationships, especially in the entertainment industry, just in, in general, day to day life. I think maybe the rationale that FK Twigs has regarding her being um, wanting to speak out because she wants women to know that even someone like herself who is successful rich and has you know a good group of friends around her can also be caught in the situation as it can help people I don't necessarily think that is um, true I think it's maybe a bit of a naive point I don't think you know the regular everyday woman who's kind of suffering in silence would glean anything from this story apart from at least you know it's not only her but I don't think it kind of give will give them any sort of uh, comfort knowing that FK2 is getting abused um, it doesn't necessarily do anything it doesn't move the conversation forward but i do understand that you know with especially young people especially in hollywood especially just you know narcissistic a types um when they sort of meet people like this like shayla buff has been detailed in this example they're not necessarily the best match again it can be difficult i can imagine if you're some if you're like an alpha female like a fk twigs and you're super successful and doing your own thing it can be very difficult to date you know the dude at subway so it does make more sense maybe to kind of date people within your industry who kind of get what you're doing but the trouble is you're both coming into it you know most of the time people that perform on that level that she is performing on and, and that he's doing his uh, there is usually a kind of burning desire or to kind of escape the tread of your everyday life or maybe just that you're kind of wanting to put out your emotional distress in some sort of artistic form right so you're carrying baggage you're carrying some level of trauma so to have two people who are suffering from those two things in one place trying to you know pursue a, a career it just seems it just doesn't seem a uh, tenable it doesn't seem like the right solution it doesn't seem like the right combination of people again like i said i appreciate she can't date subway dude but there definitely has to be a um a conversation around uh how maybe some young ladies maybe enable this sort of behavior because i do think a lot of these dudes um like shayla buff have a usually a track record of being absolute dickheads to most of the women in their lives with the exception of what of their mothers maybe and i do think sometimes there can be this little thing nagging temptation in a woman's mind to be like oh i'm gonna be the one to change him i'm gonna be the one to set him right i'm gonna be the one to fix him and i just think that is a bit naive i just think people that are kind of you know made the way Shayla Buff is and who have gone through the things that he has gone through will just inevitably always have this sort of switch in them and it's whether or not you can um, tolerate that if you're a woman or um, whether or not you accept that whether or not you think your love deserves that sort of um, response whether or not that's a sort of love language actually that you want to um, partake in any way shape or form but anyway let's regard let's actually read the article and we can dive a bit more deep into it so it says here this is fk twig sues shia labeouf citing relentless abusive relationship written by katie benner and melanie rizik um it says the following just after valentine's day in 2012 sorry 2019 the musician fk twigs was in a car speeding towards los angeles at the wheel was her boyfriend the actor shia labeouf he was driving recklessly she said in a lawsuit filed on friday removing his seatbelt and threatening to crash unless she professed her love for him already warning signs they were returning from a de from the desert where LeBeuf the star of Transformers had raged at her throughout the trip FK Twig said in a lawsuit once waking up in the middle of the night choking her after she begged to be let out of the car she said he pulled over at the gas station she took her bags from the trunk but Mr. LeBeuf followed and assaulted her throwing her against the car while screaming in her face according to the suit he then forced her back in the car the gas station incident is at the heart of the lawsuit that Mr. LeBeuf 34 abused FK Twigs physically emotionally and mentally many times in a relationship that lasted just short of a year her aim in coming forward she said in an interview was to explain how even critically acclaimed artists with money, home, and a strong network of supports can be caught in such a cycle. She says, I'd like to be able to raise awareness on the tactics that abusers use to control you and take you away from your agency, FKA Twigs, born to Leela Deborah Barnett said. Mr. LeBeuf responded on Thursday,
related the concerns raised by Mrs. Barnett and, and the second former girlfriend who was accused him of abusive behavior in an email that broadly addressed his conduct. Um, he said, I'm not in any position to tell anyone how my behavior made them feel. The New York Times, uh, he said in the New York Times, I have no excuses for my alcoholism, my aggression, only rationalization. Um, I have been abusive to myself and everyone around me for years. I have a history of hurting people closest to me. I'm ashamed of the history and I'm sorry for those I hurt. There is nothing else I can really say, which is a pretty decent response, I guess, from somebody who obviously knows that they are bang, you know, they've got bang to rights. They've got, you know, they've been caught red handed. They've been called out on this shit. Finally, they have to be accountable for the actions. And it definitely is in stark contrast to how a kind of Brian Callen approach this situation that he's in, right? That's kind of what kind of rubbed me up the wrong way. He kind of responded to the accusations of rape and, you know, um, sexual misconduct to, you know, attributing it to council culture. It's like, no, this isn't council culture. This is people that have had intimate experiences with you who said that you kind of overstepped the mark on several occasions and they calling you to rights to it especially in this era where people especially women feel like they have finally the platform because i think there was people were listening before but they weren't listening to the extent they're listening to now things definitely change now things definitely move in a better direction you don't get blacklisted that maybe you would have in the past if you're a woman it feels like there's more support group people are more understanding of or more willing to listen and accept your accept your position that you were in because i think maybe in the past people might have said oh you put yourself in that position you know sort of like um what they call it is it victim victim blaming sort of thing that they do online sometimes or there's you know that kind of adage of like oh she's wearing a short skirt she deserved it that sort of brain dead thinking but i think people are a bit more you know aware of the different f challenges that face different genders and different you know uh, sectors of the entertainment industry especially women more so it's just exploitive in its very nature just not even i guess it's not even gendered it's just ingrained in that industry because of you know you look at contracts you look at the way roles are doled out you look at positions of influence and power it's just it's just uh it's just rife for exploitation so it's no surprise that young impressionable women who don't really have any experience would essentially get taken for a ride um but again it's good that they have a platform now where they can sort of speak about it openly um again going back to this i just think I I think part of the allure with somebody like a Shirley Booth, especially if you're a lady, has to be that he's this like rock star, crazy dude, right? Who sort of lives off the seat of his pants, um, immerses himself into roles, and you know, kind of uh, is kind of a uh, a complete contrast to the um, you know the quintessential image of somebody you would imagine to be a Hollywood star. So there is definitely an aspect of a law that will kind of attract you to somebody like that. But again, I just think there are so many red flags or somebody like him. I'm sure his behavior and how he goes on and the fact that he's an A-list star, I don't think this is the first time because, you know, Mutel's account that supposedly he choked her and shouted at her at a gas station. I'm sure there were witnesses that saw these sort of things, but I think at the level of celebrity that they're at, they can probably shush and silence people. Um, I think the fact that this is the first I've ever heard of him being abusive to women in the press in any certain extent especially when you consider the kind of person that he is if you've kind of watched honey boy you'll get a glimpse into how he's grown up and he's had a bit of a you know a hard upbringing this makes complete sense right this story does kind of marry up with the person that you saw he depicted himself as in the big screen but why haven't we heard about anything concerning Shia LaBeouf prior to this why are we only hearing this one story based on FK Twig's brave decision to sue him in court? Because there are people enabling him in the industry. That's the issue at hand. That's why sometimes I get a bit annoyed when, you know, again, I understand the victims, but when women always kind of attribute this to like a men v women thing. It's more complicated. That It's more so a deep seated um, corrupt, moral corruptness that kind of has, has kind of infested the entire industry, right? I look, I think of someone like um, Harvey Weinstein's personal assistant who, somehow still maintains that she had no idea that this abuse was happening underneath her watch and it's just impossible to think of that right it's just impossible to believe that a monster such as harvey weinstein was able to separate his debauched acts that he did to young aspiring actresses as they come up in the scene and for his closest assistant to not have seen anything that have occurred it's just not possible to it to happen there has to have been enablers around him that let these things happen and again when you read the accounts um, from various women there are different people at various stages of the process before you get to Harvey Weinstein that would have known exactly what he was trying to get out of these women who didn't raise the alarm, who didn't warn them beforehand. And those are the people who are probably as much to blame as the actual um, aggressor. Um, 
themselves so there's definitely some questions that need to be said like why didn't we hear about these stories by Sheriff Pryor why does it take um, a brave young lady's um, court case in order for us to start asking some questions about his conduct and how he goes on and how he's portrayed in movies and how he's sort of received in public in you know by critics and whatever it may be and it's just a really disappointing thing to see and like I said it goes to show that it's less about the men and the women and power dynamics and it's more so about the people behind the scenes who enable this behavior who are more worried about their job than do doing the right thing and speaking truth and kind of highlighting abusers they just want to maintain their position it's just a very insidious industry to begin with um it continues said the lawsuit filed in los angeles Supre um, superior court says that mr labeouf knowingly gave miss barnett a sexually transmitted disease it accuses him of relentless abuse including sexual battery assault and infliction of emotional distress flipping hell um, Melissa labeouf his representative did not immediately respond to the request to comment on the lawsuit like it's interesting too considering that he's such a style icon on instagram like he's like the um he's like the fit version or like the cooler version of a jonah hill right people seem to kind of um uh, adorn this style god status on him so much so that i think i remember kanye tweeting that he wanted him to model for his easy line but he didn't turn up for the fitting or something but there are pages and pages on instagram dedicated to his style where he wears like running shorts and you know army boots and shit and looks like he just you know crawled himself out of an ashtray but Oh, I wonder how they're going to sort of approach this sort of news. Do they just continue posting his fits or do they address the situation or do they close down their accounts? I wonder. It continues. Um, Carol Foe, a stylist who, Carolyn, sorry, Carolyn Foe, I think you pronounce that, uh, who's another of Libus' former girlfriends, described a similarly tumultuous experience to the Times, some of which are so also outlined in a lawsuit. Once the suit said he drunkenly pinned her to a bed, head hard butted her enough that she bled. Afterwards, she began to grapple with the idea that she was abusing her, that he was abusing her. So much goes into breaking down a man or woman to make them okay with a certain kind of treatment she had an interview. That is always a really big warning sign, isn't it? whenever you read these stories whenever there's a pattern of behavior from different women um across various across different points of time it definitely goes to show that quite possibly the person that's been accused of the crime is definitely guilty you know this sort of headbutting of the thing the choking the whatever it may be the you know shouting whatever it may be the, those are still elements that you saw being repeated in um fk twigs account so it definitely if you're one of the uh, people's on the fence like oh we don't know there's not enough evidence it's like mm, he sounds like a piece of shit to be fair it continues presented with a detailed account of the claims that the woman made against him in interviews and subsequently in lawsuit miss labeouf responding in a separate email wrote that many of these allegations are not true he said um the opportunity to air their statements publicly and accept accountability for those things i've done he said a sober he's a member of a sober 12 step program so i'm guessing is that that's part of the process reason why he was so abusive but again not an excuse he said, I am not a cured of my PTSD and alcoholism, but I'm committed to doing what I need to do to recover and I'll forever be sorry for the people that I may have harmed on the way. It's a good, obviously, explanation, but it kind of feels a little bit like, um, is it Kevin Spacey when he got accused of, um, you know, sexual assault by that Star Trek character guy? I forgot his name, Star Trek Discovery actor. And then he immediately came out and said, I'm gay. All right. It's like, that's not a way that you can't attract, um, those sort of accusations. But I guess, I guess he's doing the work in it behind the scenes, 12 step program. He's obviously going through therapy, I'm assuming. Uh, continues here mr labeouf has a long history of turbulent behavior he's been arrested several times on charges that have been dismissed including assault disorder it's getting this is this is a bit smarmy for the new york times why would they include um charges that have been dismissed just to what so, because those the accusations are this is where they lose me sometimes the accusations already are enough right he's a, like two people that he kind of was in a long-term relationship with are deciding to go to court right in order to sue him <clears throat> and i think fk twig said she's going to use the funds um to give back to you know certain women's groups and whatever it may be but for somebody that you're in a relationship with you know it's fair enough that you were in a toxic relationship and you both said and did bad things and you just want to move on but for fk twigs to kind of take the time out of her day to file charges in a court of law and for another girlfriend to also latch onto the back of that and file charges alongside it goes to show that he was probably a bit of a shithead um so there's, that's what needs to be said you don't need to add this you know he has charges that have been dismissed say so why does that matter if they've been dismissed <clears throat> 
It continues. In 2013, strangers recorded a video of him arguing with his girlfriend at the time, the actress Mia Goff, telling her this is the kind of thing that makes a person abusive. Jesus Christ. After the men recording, Mr. Buff gave him a ride. He told them if I'd stayed there, I would have killed her. According to the video, oh, yeah, I remember that one. He was super smashed in it. Um, it continues. Said Miss Mr. Miss Barnett said, "Listen, the Buff would squeeze her and grab her by the point of bruising, but she did not go to the police. She said first out of misguided concern about harming his career, and later because she thought her account would not." be taken seriously as it would be futile mm, that's not true though and it come on a successful um rich attractive young lady who's been abused by somebody in hollywood it's always going to be a leading story people are always going to believe you um i don't think there's anyone that people would end i don't think there's a man that the public would ever take the side of in this sort of a, a, um a example so i think this is a little bit you know self-flagellation of some sort it continues here though many states have laws that treat gender-based sexual domestic violence as civil rights and violation um tort suits of the kind miss barrett is pursuing with a daunting account of painful moments are relatively uncommon most of the allegations arise amid divorce or custody proceedings or while seeking uh, orders of protection but there has been a slight uptick in civil claims since the me too movement amid more attention on the complex nature of abuse such said um julie uh, goldsheed a law professor at CYU Law School who studies gender violence and civil rights yeah that makes sense I would imagine a lot of women out there probably don't even know they're in a British relationship until they see it being spoken about in public right until they see stories of people being you know I don't know someone coming you know your, your partner coming in at night and pushing you around the bed or whatever whatever aggression that might be put towards you sometimes you just rationalize in your head especially when you're in love you rationalize the most insane things so there is an aspect of um benefit when these celebrities come out and say these things but i do think sometimes when they deem themselves to be more important than the issue at hand and say you know i just said in the beginning that she feels like you know this is a good way of women to know that someone like myself can be in situations it doesn't really serve anyone i don't think um like, and then at the end i think this is the most important thing she said in the law where she says here she gives the bed da, 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 da. yeah she said um in the lawsuit miss barnett uh, said she plans to donate a significant portion of her monetary damages to domestic violence charities he said it was actually very expensive and a massive undertaking of time and resources to get out she said in an interview her status makes her a situation unusual she said and she wanted to share her story because it was otherwise uncommon so common she says what i went through with shia was the worst thing i've ever been through in my life and i don't think people would ever think that would happen to me hmm. but i think it's the thing that it can happen to anybody but again credit to her for going through with it credit to her for putting her face front and center credit because you know because I, I don't think anyone wants to be portrayed as much as people say victimhood culture is a you know a scourge in society i don't think most people want to be labeled a victim i think most people would rather have let people have the illusion that they're strong independent women so for them to put themselves front and center with this sort of allegation it does take a level of courage and bravery um so definitely credit to her and again her kind of wanting to donate a significant portion of the pro of the proceedings or the winnings to charity again says a lot about her as a person as well you know in her moment of struggle and need she's still trying to look out for others so again credit to her and hopefully there'll be some resolution going forward but again it'll be interesting to see what happens with Shay LaBeouf and his career what does occur because he's a bit of a media darling he's well liked in the industry he's obviously supremely talented you know in front and behind the camera what do they do he's a big cash cow um do they you know counsel him do they give him um, a timeout it'll be interesting to see how he gets treated compared to other people that have been accused of these things who have maybe had a bit more a bit more of a um adversarial relationship with the press or just haven't had the best reputation with media people because i've said it be prior i think about jobs i've always been under the i've been under no illusion that most jobs for the most part you're not really judged on your skill or your level of proficiency you're more so judged on your ability to kind of connect with your co-workers and you know um you know have some sort of rapport with them so if that's the case then it's no surprise that the people that get cancelled the most are the ones that most people don't like anyway and they're just trying to find an excuse to get them out of the of the, of the scene and basically you know give their chance and position to somebody else that they kind of favor so it'll be interesting to see in this case <clears throat> with a shine the buff that people actually like what happens there do people still have the same energy or do they try and make excuses for him because they like him let me see what happens it'll be interesting to see how this story develops